What's up everyone? So this is going to be the third video in a series covering Fourier series. Uh, we're going to be actually be solving a slightly different integral. Um, this time it's essentially just the cosine cosine integral. Uh, but for this video we're going to be slightly picking up the pace for those, those who are following along with the series. And by that I mean that we're simply going to be solving this integral using both the cosine and the complex exponential methods. Uh, so yeah, let's get right into it. All right, so we have the integral of i is equal to 0 to 2 pi cosine of mx cosine of nx dx. And we're also using the same assumptions as the previous videos where m and n are integers. So we have these as integers. And since we'll go ahead and start this video by using uh, by solving this integral using the trig identities. Uh, so let's go ahead and write these guys down. We have sine of x plus or minus y will be equal to sine x cosine y plus or minus sine y cosine x. And then the other trig identity that we could possibly use is cosine of x plus or minus y. That equals cosine of x cosine y minus plus sine x sine y. And so again, I just googled these trig identities. I didn't uh, I haven't taken the time to try to memorize these guys and the whole reason that I'm trying to be honest with you guys that um, like we don't normally memorize these things unless it comes up for like an exam or something like that. But normally um, it's it's too much to memorize these guys. Um, so yeah, uh, we're just going to go ahead and take a look at both of these and say, well, which one's going to be a better substitution? If we use this guy, uh, well, I mean, really we can't, right? Because we have cosine times a cosine. So instead, we notice that, th that this guy here actually has a cosine times another cosine. And so by default, we're going to be using this second trig identity. Um, so let's not specifically pick a particular cosine of x plus or minus y. Um, let's just go ahead and randomly pick one, so and then we'll see how it still ends up working out for us. Um, so we have cosine of x plus y, and that equals cosine of x cosine y minus sine x sine y. And then we can solve for our cosine of x cosine y, and we get a cosine x cosine y will be equal to, all we have to do is just add sine x sine y to both sides, and we get a cosine of x plus y plus sine x sine y. And we can go ahead and plug this into this integral right here. But if we were to do that, we would end up with another, uh, with two different uh, trig identities multiplying each other. And we end up with the same exact problem. So we try to fix that by basically saying, well, if we used cosine of x plus y, let's go ahead and use cosine of x minus y instead. And then if we do that, you'll notice something uh, that happens, which is gonna be that, well, let's go ahead and work it out. We have cosine of x, cosine y, plus a sine x, sine y. And then now we can see that we, if we solve for sine x, sine y, we end up with a cosine of x minus y minus a cosine x, cosine y. And then we end up seeing that we have like terms and then our cosine of x, cosine y ends up actually breaking up into two different um, trig identities that are just summing each other rather than multiplying each other. So if we were to do that, we have sine of x sine y equals cosine of x minus y minus cosine x cosine y. And then now we can plug this guy into here. And so then we end up getting a cosine of x. Oh, yeah, cosine of x cosine y will be equal to a cosine of x plus y and then we have a plus cosine of x minus y minus a cosine x cosine y. And then now we add cosine x cosine y to both sides and we get a two cosine x cosine y cosine of x plus y plus cosine of x minus y. And then if we were to continue solving this guy, we get a cosine of x cosine y equals a cosine of x plus y plus a cosine of x minus y all over 2. And then now we use this guy as our substitution into this integral right here. 
and then now we can easily solve that so let me go ahead and clear the screen for you guys so that we can continue through with this all right so then now our integral our original integral was cosine of mx cosine of nx dx is equal to if we were if we were to use that trig identity we have an, a one half in front right zero to two pi cosine of mx plus nx plus cosine of n mx minus nx dx and then if we continue simplifying this down a little bit we get a one half integral from zero to two pi of cosine of m plus n times x plus a cosine of m minus n times x dx and then now before we start solving this or evaluating this integral uh, we're going to break it up into different cases like we did before where our first case is going to be that m is equal to n and then we're just going to say that they're both equal to l and so if we use that we end up seeing that our integral simplifies down a little bit and it becomes a cosine of well m plus n gives us a 2l and then we get an x there and then plus because we have the m minus n we have a cosine of zero and then cosine of zero is just going to be a one and then we have that dx there and so then now we can evaluate this and we get a negative sine of 2lx divided by 2l plus x going from zero to two pi now if we were to plug these limits in we have a one half minus sine of four pi l divided by 2l plus a 2 pi and then minus well sine of 0 is just going to be a 0 and then we have plus a 0 so then we just have that and then remember that 4 pi l um, is going to be an integer multiple of 2 pi and because we're taking the sine of that integer multiple of 2 pi uh, we end up just getting a 0 and so then our final answer ends up being a 1 half times a 2 pi and that's simply just pi and again this is for the case the first case case one and then now our second case is going to be well the exact opposite where m does not equal n and because we're going to be doing this i'm going to go ahead and say that let a equal m plus n and b equal m minus n and then now we have i will be simplified in a different way and we have still that one half in front 0 to 2 pi of cosine ax plus cosine bx dx and then if we were to evaluate this integral I get a one half in front a minus sine of ax divided by not 2a but just a by itself minus a sine bx over b evaluated from 0 to 2 pi and then if we plug that in you'll see that we end up getting the exact same thing as we did before where we have a one half negative sine of two pi a over a there minus a sine two pi b over b and if we plug in zero into both of these signs we end up just getting a zero and if we look at the two pi a a has to be an integer simply because an integer plus an integer gives you another integer and so then two pi a ends up being an integer multiple of two pi and because it's the argument of sine we end up getting a zero and with using the exact same reasoning we see that this guy is also zero and so then we end up getting that i is equal to zero for case two let me go ahead and clear the screen for you guys really quick so we end up seeing that this integral has two different answers we get pi as long as m equals n and then zero as long as pi does not equal n and again we can simplify this down a little bit so if i were to factor out that pi we get this and then again this piece here is represented by the kronecker delta function and if this doesn't make sense you can go ahead and check out the previous two videos to see my explanation on what the kronecker delta was and uh, yeah so then our integral ends up being pi times the delta of mn so now let's go ahead and quickly solve this integral using the complex exponential method so that we can see that we end up getting the exact same thing as pi times delta mn uh, so yeah so let's remember that cosine of let's just say ax 
can be represented exponentially, complex exponentially, by this formula. We have an e to the i a x plus an e to the negative i a x all divided by 2. And then if we use that substitution into this integral here, then we end up getting the complex form. And then we get that i will be equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi. And notice that both of these guys are going to end up factoring in another 1 half. So then we end up getting a 1 fourth in front. And we have an e to the i mx plus an e to the minus i mx times an e to the minus, or sorry, not an e to the minus, and just an e to the i nx plus an e to the negative i nx dx. And then if we were to factor this out, we end up getting, well, a 1 fourth still in front. And we have an e to the i. Notice that I have an i x in both of these first two terms. So then I can just factor out the i x and I get an e to the i m plus n times x. So for these two terms. And then let's go ahead and factor these two guys together and we get a plus e to the i or a negative i m plus n times x. And then now let's go ahead and do these two guys and we get a plus e to the i m minus n times x. And then now let's go ahead and do these two guys right here. And then we get a plus an e to the i n minus m times x dx. And then these two pieces, we're, we're, we're actually using the exact same reasoning as we did in the, I believe, the second video of this series. And we're just basically just going to put it back into, in, into the trig form. And notice that this, these two pieces added together uh, would essentially uh, give us this exact same identity here, where instead of it being a cosine of whatever our argument is, it's just going to be a 2 cosine of that. And so then we get that i will be equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine times an m plus n times x, or our first guy. And then here, all we have to do is just factor out a negative from, from the exponent. And we'll see that we end up getting the exact same thing just with the negative. So then we get a plus cosine of m minus n times x. And sorry, I skipped a, a step here where they both had the two cosines, uh, the, the factor of two in front of each cosine. And I got rid of it by just factoring in the, the one fourth. And so then I have a one half over here. Uh, so yeah, now let's continue through with this. And actually, if you if you just look at this, this is the exact same thing that we ended up with before. And so then we end up just by default knowing that this is going to evaluate down to pi of delta mn. And so yeah, so whenever you see an integral that is being evaluated from 0 to 2 pi of two trig functions, like sine and sine or cosine and cosine, you should know that it evaluates to pi times delta mn. And then now in the next video, we're actually going to be seeing, well, what happens if we have sine times a cosine? And you'll, you'll see how it is that, that how this is actually very useful uh, for the Fourier series. Um, so stay tuned. Thank you guys.